All right, I know what you're probably thinking. This guy is probably gonna take some YouTube videos of Mr. Beast and then train an AI model to respond as if it's Mr. Beast. Or this guy is gonna create an AI avatar of Mr. Beast and then it's gonna be able to talk to people. Both of those examples are really terrible ideas. And that's just because it would water down the Mr. Beast brand, okay? The main value proposition for Jimmy Donaldson, AKA Mr. Beast, is for you to go watch his YouTube videos and be entertained. Okay, full stop. And these AI chatbots can do a lot of things. But there's no substitute for the real thing in this case. So that begs the question, what, why would Mr. Beast want a chatbot? And that's because he's running businesses, okay? And these particular chatbots will aid in his businesses, both for feastables, selling chocolate bars, or Mr. Beast burger, or, or really whatever he wants it to do. Okay, so recently, Mr. Beast released a birthday campaign on Facebook and Instagram, which is, hey, I'm giving away 26 Teslas to celebrate my 26th birthday on Instagram. Go follow me and take part. Now, this was posted on Facebook, and you can see there's 243,000 people have liked this post. Okay, I think that Mr. Beast missed an opportunity here to convert some of these people right here on Facebook because he's telling them to go to Instagram and what is the percentage of people that are actually going to leave the platform they're on and go somewhere else? It's pretty low. If you go to Instagram, same thing. It's my 26th birthday, giving away 26 Teslas. Like, comment, make sure you're following me. Now, this is great from a social media engagement standpoint. But remember, Mr. Beast has 56 million followers already. He's one of the most watched people on the entire planet. He's already got the engagement. Okay, he doesn't necessarily need huge boosting. What he needs is conversions. So this is what the AI chatbot will come in and help do. Because what we can do is we can replace his DMs with the brains of a chatbot. So let me show you how this would work. Now, this is my per personal Instagram DMs that's been converted to a business account for this demo. But you kind of get the idea. So imagine for this birthday, announcement, we said, hey, wish me a happy birthday in my DMs in order to get some, you know, special sign up for this particular sweepstakes or get some extra goodies. We'll get you a discount on some chocolate bars, you know, something along those lines. So then you have people coming to his DMs and say, hey, Mr. Beast, what's up? Give it a second. Hey there, just another trip around the sun for me today. Any idea what's special about that? So basically, I'm trying to coerce the person on the other end to wish Mr. Beast a happy birthday. All right, all right. Happy birthday. Boom, thank you for the birthday wishes. In order to enter the sweepstakes, all I need is an email address. We're giving away 26 Teslas and loads of chocolate bars. Go ahead and drop your email address right here in the chat. You say, okay, Connor at umbral.ai. So happy to celebrate my birthday with you. Here's some candles. You've been entered into the sweepstakes. Please check your email for extra goodies and discounts on your favorite feastful chocolate bars. We got a nice picture here of the man. Talk to you later, Mr. Beast. That's it. If I go and check my email address, oh, look at this. Happy birthday to Mr. Beast. Goodies inside. Okay. And now I have this nice branded email. You've been entered 20% off everything for 48 hours. Click here for 20% off. And now if you click on that link, it just sends to one of the product pages of Feastables. But you get the idea, right? This could be a landing page. This could be a product page. This could be whatever it was. So what I've done here is I've taken a potential birthday post and said, okay, hit me up in my DMs and wish me a happy birthday. And then I say, enter my email address. And what I've done is I've captured a potential lead that I can go and do whatever I want with. So how does this work? What we're going to use for this is a platform called VoiceFlow, which builds AI agents. Then we have FlowBridge, which is going to help connect VoiceFlow to the meta development platform, which is how we can replace our DMs 
with the brains of a chatbot. And then we're going to use some additional subscriptions and functionality that I'll go through here just to let you know how this works. Okay, so let's go over this from start to finish. Okay, the user is going to hit this AI assistant chatbot. And the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to capture what the user says, right? Because it's going to be an incoming DM message. And this gets saved to a variable called last utterance. And then we're going to check to see if they wished Mr. Beast happy birthday, which it's does last utterance contain happy birthday, birthday, happy B day, B day. You know, we can put whatever logic we want in here. And I actually put an end chat just for testing purposes while I was building this thing out. But look at the else condition. So what if they don't wish him a happy birthday? Here's where we have our only AI block in the entire build, which is, you know, handle this. You're Mr. Beast, also known as Jimmy, and you're expecting someone to wish you happy birthday, but they did not. This is what they said. And then I've got the last utterance variable saved in here. Respond with a witty remark and drop a hint that they should be wishing you happy birthday. Do not respond to anything vulgar, crude, offensive, or controversial. Because you can imagine the last thing Mr. Beast team want is a bunch of screenshots of people hitting this chatbot and making it say a bunch of stupid things. And look, another option here is to actually remove this AI response and just replace it with flat text, which is, I'm sorry, you got to wish me happy birthday to continue this conversation. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can go about this build, but this is just an example to make this a little bit more dynamic. Anyways, if it doesn't, if you don't wish them happy birthday, after this response, we're going to come back and wait for the user replied again. And that's because we're waiting for this happy birthday. But if the user does respond with a happy birthday. We get a nice picture of old Jimmy here. Thanks for the birthday wishes. In order to enter the sweepstakes, all I need is an email address. Now here we have a few different logic paths, and that's because we want to make sure that this email address is actually legit. So the first pass we're going to do is we have a JavaScript blocked in here, and this is called a regular expression, which we're basically matching a pattern here to make sure that it's a set of numbers and characters, then the at symbol, a set of numbers and character, then a period, and then another set of characters, right? So it actually looks like an email address. So that way, if people just enter random things, it says, hey, that's not an actual email address. Try again, which if that if it fails this check, it says, whoops, that wasn't an email address. Could you please try again? And I can show you this here. If we go back and we hit this again, hey, what's up, Jimmy? We should see the AI response. Hey there, not much. Just aging gracefully over here. You know, it's not every day you get to level up in this game of life. You're right, man. Happy birthday. Boom. Go ahead and drop your email address. Eh, I don't feel like it. So I obviously did not input an email address right there. Whoops, that wasn't an email address. Could you please try again? And that's that JavaScript step coming in and checking sure and making uh, sure that we have something that looks like an email address. My bad. It's Connor at humble.ai. And as you can see, it's actually extracted Connor at umbral.ai from that entire phrase, which is my bad period, it's Connor at umbral.ai. And that's that regex coming through and parsing and pulling out that email address. So what what's the next part of this logic? We have something called zero bounce. Now here's something really important. Now you may type in an email address, but what if I typed in something like this? Oops, where are we going? Let's start with straight up happy birthday, Jimmy, which should bypass the AI step and just immediately go to a successful ask for your email, which it does. Okay. My email is Connor is the best chatbot builder in the world at gmail.com, right? So that looks like an email address and matches the pattern. Okay. But that's obviously not a real email address. Now, this is really important that you put logic in here to catch this. Because if you have an automation that sends an email, you have to think a company like Feastables or Mr. Beast, they're sending thousands of emails a day. 
And if you tie in an email automation and you can have a chat bot just having people type in whatever the heck they want, if you fire off an email on something that is not an email address, it's going to bounce. And this is a problem because your Big Daddy Google or whoever your email provider is, is going to say, hey, you're starting to bounce a lot. We're going to stop this email account from allowing you to continue to send emails. So you need to put logic in here that checks this. And how we do this in our build is a SaaS company piece of software. It's called Zero Bounce, all right? And Zero Bounce, what I love about Zero Bounce is it's really cheap. It's one cent per credit. And for a company like Feastables that would send thousands of these out, it's even less than a single penny. But what we can do is we can hit this API with our potential email and it will go check the DNS records of whatever the email it is and make sure it actually exists. So if it doesn't, you saw, hey, this appeared to look like an email address. Connor is the best chatbot builder in the world at gmail.com. It's not an actual registered email. And then I put, you know, a little witty phrase in here. I'm Mr. Beast. You don't think I check stuff like that? Let's give it another shot. So my bad. It's really AI. And we should see a successful message like we've gotten before. So happy to celebrate my birthday with you. Here's some more stuff. Boom. So if we go back to the build here, we're going to do a get request. This is an API call in voice flow. And if you look at the zero bounce docs, this is where you get the parameters for this API call. We call email IP address, which can be blank. Then we need an API key, which we'll get from our zero bounce account. And then we capture this response into a variable that I've called zero bounce check here. And then we put another if statement here. We say if zero bounce check is valid, which is the response we get from this API, which you would check in the zero bounce docs, we know we have a valid email that at least exists. So if we send an automation email to it, it's not going to bounce. If it's not, we knew that it we know that it passes the first regex check from JavaScript, but it's not an actual registered email address, which is where this, I'm Mr. Beast, you don't think I check stuff like this text block shows up. And then the last thing we have is just some candles here. You've been entered in the sweepstakes, some more emails. Here's the last part of it. Our email, okay? Now, if we were actually had this in production with Mr. Beast's team or Feastables, this is where I would make an API call to whatever CRM or email platform you wanted to, and I'd just send him the data, which in this case would be an email address. For this particular demo, I'm using a piece of software called Loops. The reason that I like Loops is it's got a very generous free plan. It's also got a very nice API that I can tag stuff and create these automatic loops here. You can see for Mr. Beast's birthday, I've started this. This is an automation. And for those of you that are looking at this, you know, it almost reminds you of a Zapier type deal. Anyways, I have a custom event that's named Mr. Beast's birthday, which matches here. You can see that I've passed this object in the API call, event name, Mr. Beast's birthday. So I'm letting loops know that I want to trigger this automation loop. I'm passing valid email as the email address that we cleaned from all the logic previously. And here's a nice thing. The source was coming from Instagram. And if it was coming from Facebook, I would just type Facebook in here. That way I would get an idea of where are these email addresses coming from. Okay. But what's the, the, the kicker, the, the real pot sweetener for loops here. So if I go to the send email, well, how did I get this like branded really nice email here? This is probably one of my favorite things about Loops is, is it has a Figma plugin with a Mailify, which I can just create this entire email in Figma and then export it to HTML. And it has a Loops plugin here, which will give me a zip file. And I can just upload this right into Loops. So which, and I can double click on this button here, oops, and go to button layer settings. And this is where I put the product URL for this to make this clickable. So as you can see, especially for a large organization like Feastables or Mr. Beast's team, there's a good chance they're already using Figma. So they can, I can just have one of their designers, hey, we got something special coming, for Mr. Beast's birthday, here's the Figma file, drop this in an email, boom, easy peasy. So that's kind of the 
nuts and bolts here. Talk to you later. So the reason that this is so valuable and important is we can take this principle and we can apply it to a bunch of different areas, okay? You can have different promotions set up at various times with this backend logic changing from the chatbot, which we can control from VoiceFlow's side. And then also you might ask, okay, how do, what, how do we connect this to Instagram? How do we connect this to Facebook? So that's when FlowBridge comes in. And this is a FlowBridge dashboard where we set uh, integration with Instagram. And we need to get some to access tokens and keys from here to connect to the Meta for Developers page. So you have to go and create a developer account. And I created this app called Mr. Beast Demo. We come down here into Messenger Settings. We click Settings, which I've already set up here. You'll see I don't have anything for Messenger API, but if I was to connect this to Facebook Messenger, I would just do the same exact thing that I did to Instagram right here. If I click on Instagram Settings, this is where you link your Instagram account to get these access tokens and webhooks. Excuse me. So this is where you link that. And once this link has been established, then you're connected to the back end. Okay. And Flowbridge makes this really, really straightforward because the meta for developers portal, man, it is a pain in the ass to try to um, navigate and set things up and connect things to, which is why we use Flowbridge because it's only a few clicks, which is really nice. And another thing you might want to know is, Okay, Connor, well, what if the promotion ends and I want to turn this off? We just change the app mode from development, or excuse me, from live to development. Now, I have this still sitting in development just because I didn't go through some of the final checks that Facebook needs in order to push this live. So what you're seeing here in this inbox is me with a test account that's tied to this particular use case. But yeah, so that's it, okay? Well, you don't want people on Instagram and Facebook, you know, putting a bunch of external links in their posts because the social media channels, they want you to stay on platform. Okay. So if you add an AI chatbot with particular logic into your DMS, you keep people on the platform. Okay. So you don't get penalized by the algorithm and you can convert leads to do various things depending on what you want to do. So if you're running a business or you're a course creator or influencer, Take your pick, okay? This ability to build custom chatbots for specific purposes is going to start becoming more and more powerful and relevant. So if you're somebody that's out there that is interested in setting something like this up, hit me up. My name's Connor. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks.